In this video, we are going to give you a general overview of the many different browsers available to you inside of Unreal Ed. To get access to the browsers, I'm going to start off by clicking on the Open Generic Browser Window button located up here in the toolbar. And if I click on that, we get the Generic Browser. Now, the purpose of the Generic Browser is to give you access to the many different types of assets that you can place in your map, things like static meshes, materials, uh, certain textures, all kinds of different things that you might want to be able to put in your map at any given time. Now, I'm not going to go into the actual use of the Generic Browser right now. That's something we're going to be saving for an upcoming video. To the right of this, we have the Actor Classes Browser. The Actor Classes Browser gives you a hierarchical list of the many different types of actors you have access to, things such as specific types of lights, triggers, uh, maybe uh, we have like a note actor here, we have uh, all of the different weapons and vehicles. Anything in the game that you would need to place in your, uh, in your level can be found buried within this list. Moving on from here, we have the Groups Browser. This allows you a means to organize your level into a series of groups so that you can control visibility. And uh, here inside this specific map, we're actually in DM Carbon Fiber, which comes uh, Carbon Fire, thank you, which comes along with UT3. Uh, we have the we can see that we have the uh, groups all set up for lights. Like if I switch off the checkbox next to Lizites in this case, all of our light actors have disappeared. And if you missed that, I'll go ahead and turn those back on, and you can see those come back into play. I could uh, also turn off the level, which is going to kill out our static meshes. Or we could turn off the skybox, which we can't really see from here, but it's going to turn off, uh, if I pop out here, it's going to turn off a lot of the decorations that are actually out in the sky. Uh, you can see when you select a group that here on the right-hand side, we get all of the many different actors that are within that group, and there are certain functions we can perform using the menu. We can uh, create new groups, we can rename groups, delete groups, add or remove actors from groups, select and deselect the actors that are within a group, or uh, make all the groups visible, like so. All right, moving on from here, we have the level browser. Now, this is not going to be particularly useful unless we are using level streaming, uh, wherein we would have a persistent level with multiple other levels streamed into that, which is a, a nice way to uh, make very large levels, but not something that is being used all that often here inside of uh, many of these Unreal Tournament maps. So let's go ahead and move on to the Referenced Assets browser. What this will do is show you the many different assets referenced by the selected actor. Now to show you what I mean, I'm going to grab a static mesh from the level. And here inside the list, inside of our uh, reference graph, you can see Static Mesh Actor 1362. That is exactly who this is. And if we expand that, we can see the many different assets that are actually being referenced in order to place this in our game. So we can expand, uh, let's see if I go ahead and pull this list out a little bit so we can actually see. We can see the Static Mesh component. If we expand this, we can see the Static Mesh that is being referenced from within the generic browser to put this Static Mesh in the game. We can expand that and see the material. Within the material, we can see the many different material expression nodes being applied and so on and so on. Moving on from here, we have the Primitive Stats Browser. In general, this allows you to see what types of objects you have in your map, how many you have, and how much memory they're taking up. And you can see there are all sorts of things that you can uh, derive. The count of specific objects, how many sections are in each of these objects. And ba this is based on an, uh, an instance level. So you can see how many, uh, how many different instances of each type of object there are, uh, how many lights, uh, average light maps are affecting each surface. And there are just a lot of different things in here that you can uh, use kind of for diagnostic purposes to see how much memory you're using on any given thing. Next to this, we have the Dynamic Shadow Stats browser. And what this is going to do is show you how many, or I'm sorry, not how many, but what kind of dynamic shadows you are using in your map. Uh, very useful if dynamic shadows are slowing down your gameplay and you need to track down the source of those dynamic shadows. Uh, this list will not be populated the very first time you go in. In order to populate this list, you need to play the game within the browser by using the uh, play and editor button or by right-clicking somewhere in the level and choosing play from here. And then press the F10 key, which is going to send the current information for where you are, all the shadow information for your current area, into this browser. So you can then quit the uh, play and editor game and then take a look at the information you have. And I actually got this by playing the carbon fire map and running over to an elevator and pressing the F10 10 key. We get all of this. And we can see the uh, subject. So this is what the light is striking. Here's the kind of shadow that's being created. And uh, lots of different information there that we can use to determine whether shadows are playing a, uh, a, a negative role in terms of our performance. 
Next to this, we have the scene manager. This is kind of like the search for actors button, only a whole lot cooler. Uh, we will get access to uh, all of the levels that are within this per our persistent level if we are level streaming over here in this small list. But if I just select our persistent level, this suddenly gets populated with all of the various actors that are in our maps. You can see there's a whole lot of them. Uh, we have the ability to auto-focus on any of these. So if I select any one of these actors from the list, we jump right over to it so that we're staring at it. So a nice way to navigate around and take a look at specific actors. We have some, uh, a couple of buttons here. We can focus on the selected actor manually if you don't want to use autofocus. You can refresh if you make any changes or delete that actor altogether. You have a drop-down of custom filters. So if you need to just see spotlights and you don't want to have to type that in, just pull it down from the drop-down. And now all of the spotlights are shown here. So now you can uh, switch on autofocus and just cycle through the many different spotlights available in the map. If you need a custom filter, you can do that too. So let's say we want only those spotlights that have a 2 in their number. So we press 2 and enter, and there you go. There's all the spotlights that have a 2 somewhere in their name. And do you want to show brushes? Well, let me go ahead and kill out our uh, filter. And what I'll do is I'll type the word brush into our filter and press enter, and we get nothing. And then if I click show brushes, suddenly all of the brushes in our map are available. So by default, you see no brushes. Now, I'm pretty limited on screen space, but I'm going to try to stretch this out. Also included with the uh, scene manager is a properties window for whatever you happen to have selected. So as you select different articles, let me go ahead and delete this out and press enter to uh, get, uh, get rid of our filter so we can see everything. So if I select an ambient sound, we get our ambient sound properties. If I grab a static mesh, you can see that this updates, and we now have access to the static mesh properties, and so on and so forth. So this is very much like an enhanced version of the Search for Actors button. Very handy, especially if you have a separate monitor to move it over to so that you can browse through all of the different actors in your level. All right, moving over from here, we have the log, and this is pretty cut and dry. All this is going to do is show you everything that is being logged uh, inside the console of the game. It also gives you access to a console line where you can enter commands if you need to. And really, with that, that is an overview of all of the uh, browsers available to you. On all of these, you'll also have a docking menu where you can choose whether or not this browser is docked or any of these browsers are docked. You can make them floating, which you'll notice is just torn it off. It's no longer available here it's at the uh, end of my tabs. If I go back under docking and set it back to docked, it jumps back over. I can also clone the browser if I need another copy of it, so there's a, a second log should I need it, and then remove that clone if I need to. So that is an overview of all of the browsers available to you inside of Unreal Ed.